Today we're looking at super tasters. Are you a super taster? Are your friends a super taster? Is your dog maybe a super taster? I don't think that's actually possible. But today we're gonna be looking at a few different things. One, what is a super taster? Two, how can you find out? And three, what does it mean about your DNA? What does it mean about your genes if that's the case? Okay, so super tasters. You may have heard about these uh, people before. It is a genetic kind of classification for a certain individual that has a heightened sense of taste. And particularly, we are looking at a heightened sense of taste for bitter substances. Now, you may remember from another video that bitter substances basically tend to be more toxic than others. So things like caffeine, things like um, quinine, in large amounts are toxic. Uh, and so uh, super tasters have more uh, papillae, more taste buds that are dedicated to detecting uh, and synthesizing bitter agents, which makes them more sensitive overall to the perception of bitter. Uh, so, uh, a little bit of a history of this, the way that we know that this exists is because back in the 30s, this uh, chemist who was working at DuPont, his name was Arthur Fox, uh, he was working with something called uh, phenylthiocarbamide, which is uh, abbreviated in, in the literature to PTC. So, he was working with this chemical called PTC, I don't know what was going through his head, he decided to taste some of it. And he found that his reaction to tasting this stuff was very different from his colleagues, and some people had very, very strong reactions to PTC. They would taste it and they would freak out and they would say, oh, this is disgusting, I can't believe you actually let me taste this, uh, you know, why'd you do this to me? And then other people found, hey, it's not so bad. It's not, you know, it's kind of bitter, you know, it's kind of chunky, but that's it. Uh, and so, people started wondering, why is there a difference between these different kind of reactions? Is it a difference in what you've learned? You know, maybe you've built up a tolerance to bitterness, maybe you drink coffee all the time, maybe you drink beer all the time, and you aren't as susceptible to bitter uh, tastes, or maybe it's something else. And over time, over a course of decades, uh, people realize like, oh, this is actually a difference in biology. I'm just gonna call it the taster gene, uh, that we see differences in this gene expression for three different kinds of people. Some people who have more uh, bitter uh, taste buds on their tongue, which are uh, super tasters, people who have uh, the normal average majority um, uh, amount of this, which would just be regular tasters, and then an even smaller group of people who have less bitter receptors on their tongue, which are gonna be called non-tasters. All right, so how can you distinguish whether or not you are a super taster? Maybe you're curious. If you were really picky, you might be a super taster. The best way to find out is just go on the Amazon uh, and Google PTC taste strips or prop taste strips or, or in PTC or PROP, either one of those is fine. Uh, the difference between these two things is the, the uh, phenylthiocarbamide or PTC is the stronger of the two. That was the original one. It's not really used so much all, or it's not used as much in research these days because it seems like there might be some side effects of increased or, or of prolonged usage of it. So you don't want to be doing it all the time, testing yourself all the time because in large amounts it can be dangerous to you. So now people use something called PROP, uh, P-R-O-P, which is just an abbreviation for Propotheoracil, uh, um, which is a, a little bit more uh, easy on, on the body oh, whenever you do lots and amounts of it. For your purposes though, if you're only going to test yourself a couple of times, you can feel free to get either one of these. But if you go on Amazon, they're only like five or six bucks. You can get a hundred of these strips for that amount. And basically they look like this. They're just tiny little strips of paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this strip of paper on your tongue. So go ahead and try it. You know, if you have some, if you have a little vial of it, go ahead and put it on your tongue and you're gonna have one of three different reactions. If you are a super taster, you are gonna feel like you just bit into an aspirin. It's gonna be very, very bitter. You're gonna be very upset with whoever, uh, you know, told you to put this in your mouth uh, and you're gonna hate that experience a lot. People who are super tasters will say that this is about the equivalent or a little bit more intense of a sensation of looking into the sun. So very, very intense for super tasters. For people who are normal tasters, which is you know about 70% of the population, you're gonna feel kind of a chalky, uh, slightly bitter substance on your tongue. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be bad. It's gonna be, feel like you have paper in your mouth, but maybe with a little dusting of, of maybe some Tylenol or something like that. It's not gonna be bad. Uh, people who are regular tasters are going to say that that stimulus intensity is about the same sensation as looking into the low beams of a car driving by. But 
If you are a non-taster, which means that you have less t uh, of these uh, bitter taste receptors than the majority of the population, you're going to experience not really anything at all. You're gonna feel there's paper on your tongue, but that's about it. Uh, so there are those three different kind of classifications that we have. Um, what could this mean for you? Basically, people who are super tasters are very picky in the types of foods they eat. They don't really like coffee all that much. They don't like beer all that much. They like to stay with, you know, a handful of foods that they, you know, that are kind of bland. They don't like spiciness um, uh, for most of their appetite. People who are non-tasters though, generally we find that they are gonna start loading up their sandwiches with peppers and onions and all these other things that have all these different flavors and different kinds of taste to kind of basically shock their tongue into some kind of sensation because for the most part, they don't really get all that stuff. So they're not really phased by black coffee or really dark, uh, bold wines or anything like that. Okay, so those are the differences. Go ahead and go on Amazon, track down some of those uh, some of those taste strips and test yourself and your friends uh, to see if you are a super taster or not. Um, and that's it.